We will make sure that the Netherlands will be for the Dutch people again. We will restrict the asylum tsunami and migration. People will have more money in their wallet again. Well, that's Gerd Wilders. He's the leader of the Conservative Freedom Party in the Netherlands after his party's stunning election victory last month. Wilders, you may know, has long warned of the dangers of radical Islamic terrorism and the flow of immigrants to Western Europe. He ran on a platform that even included calling for a ban on refugees. The migrant crisis there sparking not only a backlash, but elsewhere throughout Europe. Last month, riots and unrest broke out in Dublin, Ireland, after a stabbing attack wounded three young children. The assailant, rumored to be an Islamic immigrant, the reports now say that suspect is a naturalized Irish citizen who happened to be born in Algeria. But anti-immigration politicians have been scoring victories in Sweden, Italy, Spain, legislation also introduced in France. Nara Gardner joins us now, former foreign policy advisor under uh, British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher, currently director of the Heritage Foundation's Margaret Thatcher Center for Freedom. Niall, always good to see you. What is the genesis uh, of the pushback and of Gerd Wilder's win, and do you expect that this will expand throughout Europe as, as they have seen this influx? Uh, great to see you, uh, Eric. Thanks very much for having me on the show today. Uh, and uh, as you point out, I think that uh, the Netherlands has seen a political earthquake uh, with the election victory of Gert Wilders and the Freedom Party, who won nearly a quarter of the vote, uh, doubling all expectations, I think, in terms of their overall uh, support. And I think this uh, certainly is sending shockwaves across Europe. Uh, the key reason, I think, for uh, Wilders' success in the Netherlands uh, is the huge level of uh, migration into the Netherlands, uh, which I think is a common feature of many Western European countries uh, today. And mass migration, including from large numbers of asylum seekers, uh, really was the, the key critical issue in the Dutch elections. Also significantly, I think that uh, Wilders uh, campaigned on issues such as combating soaring levels of uh, crime. Also, he called for support for a referendum in the Netherlands on uh, EU membership, uh, known as Nexit in, uh, in the Netherlands. And so there was a strong Eurosceptic approach, I think, to his, his campaign. But without a doubt, I think the issue of uh, immigration, mass migration, fears over uh, high levels of crime as, as well, uh, really dominated the Dutch elections. And uh, I think it's become the number one issue all over uh, Western Europe at this time. You know, critics have condemned Wilders, uh, certainly in the past, uh, called him xenophobic. He had been uh, indicted on charges of incitement, uh, it was overturned, uh, and he's been a very controversial figure. But do you think he and others in Europe have struck a chord over the type of uh, migration that they saw, especially from the Middle East and the war in Syria? Yeah, I think they have, because uh, this year alone, I think about a million um, people have uh, sought asylum uh, in the European Union. So th those are staggeringly high figures, the highest since 2015-16. Uh, uh, and especially there are fears over uh, the large numbers of uh, Islamists who are entering into, into Europe. This, this is a huge issue. Uh, and as, as we're seeing right now with all the protests on the streets of London and many European cities, uh, there are huge numbers of Islamist militants who are currently coming out on the streets supporting uh, Hamas uh, and other Islamist uh, movements. And this is causing great concern, I think, across Europe. So I think the, the Wilders campaign uh, really goes to the very heart of the issue. Uh, fears over mass migration, especially from the Middle East and North Africa, largely uh, Islamic migration into, into Europe. Uh, and, and fears, really, of a kind of cultural invasion. Uh, and it's the same fears that you see not only in the Netherlands, but also uh, France, uh, Germany, uh, Spain, Italy, uh, Sweden. Uh, and so in every major Western European country, the issue of mass migration, especially from the Islamic world, is now the number one political issue. Some say, well, it helps the labor market and it helps the economy, but do you see a, a cultural impact in a, in a way that it could change the actual character of some of those nations? We saw those mass protests, for example, in London, and are those concerns by some? Do you think uh, they're warranted that they're, they're seeing, you know, a change that they did not actually expect? Yes, I, I, th I think the, the fears and concerns are, are warranted. Um, especially when you see the, the scenes of 
huge numbers of Islamist militants taking the streets of European cities, basically supporting Hamas. And in London, for example, uh, many British Jews are afraid to go into central London on Saturdays when these demonstrations are held because of the deeply anti-Semitic nature of these, uh, these protests. So the fears are very genuine. Crime is rising across, across Europe, uh, much of it driven actually by high levels of, of migration uh, into Europe. And so these fears and concerns are very, very real. This is also a backlash against the, the ruling liberal elites that you've seen in many European countries who have brought in large numbers of migrants. And there is a fundamental rejection of that approach today in practically every single European uh, country. And European publics are saying they've had enough of mass migration, and they're really sending a clear message to the European ruling elites that enough is enough. And finally, in Sweden, for example, officials say that there is a rising crime rate, as you just said. They say it's because of the migrants, quote, failure to integrate. What should or could European officials do about the crime and about the situation? What do you think Margaret Thatcher would have done? Yeah, great questions. And you mentioned Sweden there, where uh, levels of violent crime, gang crime, for example, have absolutely soared in the last few years, overwhelmingly driven by, uh, by migrant gangs uh, in, in Sweden. What needs to be done, it, basically a crackdown on illegal migration into, into Europe, also reducing the overall numbers of legal uh, migration. I think that Margaret Thatcher uh, would have fought back very, very strongly uh, against these large waves of migration into Europe, and she would have secured certainly Britain's borders. She would have called on European leaders to secure their borders, uh, and she would have called for an end to mass, uh, mass migration, which is proving to be uh, very, very destructive. And the whole ideology, I think, of multiculturalism has certainly been a big failure in Europe. Uh, as the former British Home Secretary Suella Braveman recently made uh, very, very clear. Uh, and so uh, there, is, there is a huge reaction across Europe against what we have seen in recent years with mass migration. But this is just the beginning. I, I think you're going to see conservative parties across Europe uh, adopting far tougher uh, positions against mass migration and also increasingly winning elections uh, as well. Now, Gardner, with the prediction, uh, with the impact, the political impact of the mass migration in Europe, uh, Nile Heritage Foundation's Margaret Thatcher Center for Freedom. Always good to see you. Thank you for joining us now. Many thanks, Eric. Of course. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.